Hello and welcome to Africa Focus, a special Africa news program on Switch TV, Kenya's number one youth television channel, coming to you live from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. My name is Sarutich Bernadette and our sign language interpreter is Tracy Dorcas. Here are the stories making our headlines. Schools reopen and virus cure distributed in Madagascar. Guinean parliament back in session with a new speaker despite the threat of coronavirus. Now let's take a look at the stories that are making headlines around the continent. After a month of lockdown, Tunisian hospitals have not experienced the overcrowding some feared from the coronavirus pandemic, which has forced an upgrade of poorly equipped public health care facilities. The COVID-19 ward at Abbedaman Memi Hospital near Tunis has received a total of 20 patients since the start of the pandemic in March, of whom more than 10 have died. To fight the pandemic, Tunisia closed its border with Libya as part of measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. The country is also under a nighttime curfew. Libyan truck drivers stranded in Tunisia attempt to cross the border into Libya by force before being stopped by the Tunisian security forces a day after more than 600 Tunisians stranded for weeks in Libya due to the coronavirus returned home after forcing their way through the border crossing. Tunisia's interior ministry, however, denied the Tunisians who crossed the Rajadir border point and had to use force, saying authorities at the frontier allowed 652 to enter from Libya. The prime minister said the lockdown was be extended to May 3rd before it is progressively eased. According to human rights activist Mustafa, around 1,300 Tunisians had must close the Rajadir border post since the lockdown was imposed in March, demanding to be allowed back home. Pretoria Church works with program to help South Africa's drug-addicted homeless amid COVID-19 pandemic. With South Africa in its fifth week of lockdown, a temporary shelter run by a church in the northern suburbs of Pretoria is looking after the country's most vulnerable, the drug-addicted homeless. Most of the 89 men at the shelter are getting treatment for heroin addiction for the first time with methadone administered by Pretoria's community-oriented substance use program or COSAP. Patients Patient numbers for COSAP have roughly doubled since the start of the lockdown as former street dwellers suffer withdrawal symptoms after being placed in shelters. In an effort to provide both medical and humanitarian aid to disaster-stricken areas, the United Nations World Food Programme has a complex logistics operation, including the use of an e-commerce app. A new hub at Addis Ababa's airport is used to arrange supplies for the onward travel to over 30 African countries. In the Somali capital Mogadishu, people are using an app that allows them to order such supplies online and have them delivered to their homes. Since late January, World Food Programme has dispatched humanitarian and medical cargo to 86 countries to support governments and health partners in their response to COVID-19. The shipments include personal protective equipment, PPEs, such as masks, gloves and gowns, ventilators and emergency health kits, anesthetic kits and stretchers, thermometers and body bags, and water purification supplies, as well as logistics equipment. In mid-April, World Food Programme began dispatching medical cargo, including one million face masks, from its recently completed regional humanitarian hub in Addis Ababa to more than 50 countries, the so-called Solidarity Flights. A team of 25 World Food Program Aviation and Logistics staff is based at the regional hub at Bole International Airport. Managing the 24-hour operation that transports cargo and humanitarian responders across the continent. Now moving to the east of the coast of Africa, in Madagascar, schools reopen and virus cure is distributed to the citizens. 12th grade students resume classes after a month of confinement. The progressive deconfinement is accompanied by a free distribution of traditional remedy, presented as preventive and curative against COVID-19. Madagascan president began easing the COVID-19 lockdown measures in the cities of Antananarivo and Tuamasina following the reported successful domestic testing of a remedy for the virus. The action goes against the advice of the World Health Organization who stated that there is no current cure for COVID-19. Yeah, it is healing. 
We hope that there will be really healings so that we can have a happy life in Madagascar because the president is making efforts to save all the people of Madagascar. <laughs> The outbreak in Madagascar that has claimed over a hundred lives also disrupted numerous activities across the country, including the education sector. The nationwide state of emergency was extended as part of efforts to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Some restrictions will remain in place, such as individuals having to wear masks when they are going out and not being allowed to leave their home cities. The closure of the schools has become the most controversial government decision in Madagascar as the start of a new school year has been postponed several times. Meanwhile, the health ministry has reported no child death was caused by contagious plague epidemic. The official state of the new school year in Madagascar has been postponed three times. When I discovered this drink, I hesitated as a parent. I said to myself, how come sick people don't drink it and why do we make students drink it? I hesitated a lot. The president said this remedy cures and we trust him, so we drink it. The postponement affects educational support zones ZAP located in 25 school districts of Madagascar including the capital Antananarivo and Tuamasina on the eastern seacoast where deaths from the plague were the most numerous. Classes have resumed normally in areas that have no reported cases. <laughs> Now moving to the west of Africa, Guinea's parliament elects a stalwart of President Alpha Conde as its head, cementing the president's control over the West African state legislature. After months of political tensions, it was the inaugural session for the new parliament after the controversial elections, boycotted by the opposition and criticized by the United States, the European Union and France. The inaugural session went ahead in spite of the threat posed by COVID-19. Guinea's parliament elected a stalwart of President Alpha Conde as its head, cementing the president's control of West African state legislature after months of political tensions. The ruling party's Amadou Damaro Kamara was elected speaker of the country's 114-seat National Assembly with 98 votes in favor. Six MPs voted for his challenger Mohamed Lamine Kaba. Je sais, je me I know and I appreciate the magnitude of my responsibilities, but I do not doubt for a moment that with your support, that together, in a participatory manner, we will meet the challenges that we face from this point on. The vote was the first since the country's contentious constitutional referendum and parliamentary election. We may have a minority in the assembly, but we can also give really give our opinion and where we don't agree on something we can choose to refuse or accept and ultimately the people of Guinea will be there to judge. Major opposition parties boycotted both polls over fears that the plan to change the constitution was a ploy to allow Conde to extend his grip on power. Voters also overwhelmingly backed the new constitution, although the United States, the European Union and former colonial power France all questioned the credibility of the results. Changing the constitution proved a hugely controversial proposal in Guinea, triggering months of protests which sometimes turned violent and deadly, which at least 32 people were killed. The new constitution limits presidential term to two, but extends the length of the term to six years. It is a decision of the state which responds. Imagine to the concern to make the state function effectively because the National Assembly is the second most important institution of the Republic and must therefore take an active part in the fight against COVID. But the opposition also fears it would allow the president to reset the clock and launch a possible further 12 years in power, a scenario that Conde has not denied. The president's second and final term ends this year. Under Guinea law, newly elected parliament speaker Kamara would succeed Conde in the event of a power vacuum.
Now moving back home, the Kenya Medical Research Institute in Kisumu is boosting its capacity to test for COVID-19 in order to help curb the spread of the virus in the country. Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri, has started manufacturing COVID-19 rapid test kits to ease the testing burden at the state's facilities. Kemri, which is leading in sampling COVID-19 cases, has had a production unit for some years. It has been operating on a need basis, production of hand sanitizers, diagnostic testing kits and other products for the region, but now with the COVID-19, the need is much higher. So far, here in Western Kenya, we cover Western Kenya and part of South Rift. We've tested almost 900 samples and all of those we've released results. We've tried working really hard on our turnaround time. Um, we try our best to make sure that our turnaround time, time is within 24 hours. The move is part of the government effort to start working on factors that will facilitate mass testing for its residents. The rapid testing kits to facilitate the need to conduct as many tests in a day as possible is underway. So the beauty about the equipment is a high throughput equipment which is able to test up to 960 samples in an eight hour shift. It is a simple kit just like the others that are used in HIV testing with three unilateral lines that will check for the any SARS like virus. Ivorian economists now say deferring the debt repayments of poor countries for several years could allow the African economies to bounce back after the COVID 19 pandemic. Here are the details. Moves by rich countries to freeze debt payment for poor nations grappling the coronavirus crisis are positive but fall far short of a real fix, according to African experts. The agreement on debt announced by the group of 20 wealthier nations is a one-year freeze on payment of debt owed by 76 poor nations, 40 of which are in Africa. It is insufficient because that was hoped for more was cancellation. Since a moratorium means you defer payment, this will increase debt services in the coming years and will be a heavy burden on low-income countries, especially African countries. Africa's overall debt stands at around $365 billion, around a third of which is owed to China. The world's weakest economies will be able to free up precious cash for immediate needs, but will still struggle under a mountain of debt, according to experts. According to Hussein Bakar of a Niger's citizens group called AEC, African countries will spend a lot in fighting the coronavirus pandemic. He added that the fact that there is a moratorium helps these states to mobilize funds that they otherwise would have had to earmark for repaying debt. And by giving a breath of fresh air through the moratorium, if not to hope for cancellation, which will thus enable the low-income countries in particular to have the financial capacity for their policies, their political choices. According to Jean Alabro, an Ivory Coast economist, the moratorium will stop African economies from falling off the cliff in the immediate future. But if solutions are not forthcoming, catastrophe lies ahead. In terms of infections, Africa so far has been relatively unscathed by the pandemic when compared to Europe or the United States. In the continent, North African countries included had recorded under 18,000 cases and fewer than 1,000 of these had been fatal. However, health experts say the contagious microbe could be devastating in urban slums, refugee camps and war zones, especially given the continent's notorious weak health systems. As a result, antivirus lockdowns 
curfews and other restrictions when coupled with a slump in world demand for minerals and tourism are said to have a grateful impact on African economies. The International Monetary Fund expects Africa's gross domestic product to shrink by 1.6% in 2020, the worst result ever recorded, while the World Bank has warned that the region could slip into its first recession in 25 years. Donc pour que ce moratoire... For this moratorium to be more practical, I would say, for African countries, it might be interesting to postpone the servicing of the 2020 debt for several years. You could have 800 billion CFA francs to pay. You carry it over 10 years, for example. The debt agreement should free up around $20 billion that can be used to fight the coronavirus pandemic, according to Saudi Finance Minister Mohammed Al Jadan. Commentators pointed to the fact that the debt will remain on the books and the payment freeze only applies to government to government debt, not on liabilities to private lenders. We're going to take a short break for now. However, coming up after the break. In DRC, traditional medicine is used to fight COVID-19. Welcome back. Now, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Democratic Republic of Congo, people in Kinshasa are turning to medical plants, particularly Congo Bololo. In the capital central market of Gambela, several locals head to stalls of traditional pharmacies to buy plants and roots in bid to curb coronavirus. <laughs> As scientists battle to find a cure for the novel coronavirus, inhabitants of Kinshasa, capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, have resorted to distributing traditional medicines. They flood traditional pharmacies at the Gambela Central Market to stock up on Gongo Bololo, believed to cure patients. Uh, plant, uh, uh... This plant was used when they had very sick children to treat internal diseases, they used to talk about the belly or sometimes for fevers. Traditionally, they used it, but unfortunately, it is used in the traditional way. The dose is not well known, and even then, it caused a lot of accidents. Ce pas bien connu. Et, et même à Africa traditional practitioners believe the way of their ancestors might be the way out of a pandemic that has brought the global economy to its knees. Beatrice Swamilu is one of them and boasts that the continent has treated diseases with similar symptoms in the past. We did not prescribe Congo Bololo to people only for the coronavirus. No, Congo Bololo is a plant that everyone can consume. If one cannot find the solution in modern medicine, at this time they return to the medicine of the ancestors and we could prescribe them afterwards a cure from these plants. While certain substances can elevate the symptoms of new coronavirus, there is currently no evidence that they can prevent or cure the disease. Respect the measures, but, cons Respect the measures, but also use turmeric, consume ginger, garlic, onions, the manuguet, commonly known as mandongo in Kinshasa. Use eggplant because they are active ingredients, molecules, and therefore antioxidants in its food products, which are potential inhibitors of the protease of COVID-19. But with a conventional cure still elusive and fears pervasive, African herbalists are keen to fill the void. One traditional practitioner in the DRC is running adverts on a local radio station. Such claims fly in the face of warnings from mainstream scientists who say there is no known cure for coronavirus and urge rigorous testing to prove the effectiveness and safety of the proposed traditional cures. People suffering from fever, coughs and other diseases, they are advised to take these plants. Congo Bololo, Lumba Lumba, Sisi Simba, Sinki, all these mixtures of plants that we advise them to boil, to turn in the pot in order to inhale the vapor of the plant for three days. After that, the patient will feel better. Some of the touted remedies have proven fatal. 
the UN Radio Okapi reported last month that three children in DRC died after their mother administered a medicinal plant believed to prevent contamination by the virus. Well, the jury is still out if the traditional remedies are actually effective. Now, moving on to the west of Africa, authorities in northern Nigeria's largest city of Kano begin evacuating hundreds of child beggars to their hometowns in a bid to stem the spread of COVID-19. Steadily on the rise in the commercial city, the children are pupils of controversial Islamic schools who would usually be found begging in the streets of Kano for small change. Hundreds of boys have their names and temperatures checked as they wait to board buses in a northern Nigeria city to transport them back to their villages. The children are pupils of controversial Islamic schools who would usually be found begging in the streets of Kano for small change. This situation, uh, COVID-19, this uh, pandemic, you know, it is a serious disease. And it's a serious calamity that is controlling the whole the entire nation, the entire country. So that is why uh, we decided to close down all these uh, uh, schools, both private uh, and public schools, including Islamia and Ando. Now, they are the first batch in a program that seeks to curb the spread of coronavirus by clearing some 250,000 children from the city streets as college seminaries. For now, because we are doing it in phases, uh, we have a total of 1,595 which we are going to evacuate between today and tomorrow. Usually a vibrant city of 4 million people, Kano is the third hardest hit area by the virus in Nigeria, with more than 73 confirmed cases and one death of COVID-19. Residents are under a week-long lockdown that has seen roads emptied and people largely remaining indoors. My reason for returning home is due to the week-long lockdown imposed by the government, which affects access to food for their children under our care as people remain indoors. People don't open their doors, so these children can't get their food to eat. As part of the clampdown, the authorities have also turned their attention to child beggars, who according to one estimate could number several million in this state. A committee in Kano State identified 251,893 child beggars to send back home. The authorities made ready appeals to clerics to evacuate their pupils and the 1,500 boys collected so far were those willingly ready to go. My advice to fellow teachers is that everyone should remain in their village and continue to teach the Quran to their younger relations and children as it is part of our life which we cannot forsake. The state Sharia police, known as Hisba, were ordered to arrest any clerics and parents who failed to comply. But an initial crackdown saw only 1,500 children return to their homes in the neighboring states before the enforcement lost team. Now, members of South Africa's Red Ants, who are known for their eviction tactics on illegally occupied land, demolish houses in Loli, southwest of Johannesburg. The operation takes place amid South Africa's nationwide lockdown, reportedly as an attempt by the South African government to ease the curve of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, the government statistics agency found that more than 40% of South African companies fear that they may not survive the coronavirus pandemic as the country struggles with a five-week lockdown. Yes, we're supposed to be locked up. They said we must be locked up. And now, they, here they come. They said we mustn't be in groups, and now here we come. We're running up and down, up and down. We... We're running, we, we don't know where to go. Our children doesn't have any place to stay. We don't know, we also don't have places to stay. Look what they've done to my house. Is They tell the radios that we are using this coronavirus to come and settle here. And we haven't, we've been here two years. We stayed here for two years, before, long before coronavirus. I was in the zoos, I was sitting peacefully until they came and they bulldozed the place down while I was still inside. What happened if they killed me or I died? Then what then? I can't do anything, so it was locked down inside. Now I'm locked down outside. I have nowhere to go. I can't even go to the family, it's locked down because they're going to arrest me, they want a permit. Where do I get a permit? 
Now moving to the Horn of Africa, people in Somali capital Mogadishu speak of their challenges to find affordable food and survive without family remittances amid the coronavirus pandemic. Somalia has recorded a rise in coronavirus cases in the past week, with the majority of those affected reportedly young people. So far, there have been more than 230 confirmed cases and eight deaths in the country. A member of parliament and a state minister are among those who have died. 90% of the confirmed cases are in the capital Mogadishu and although the government has introduced measures to contain the virus, widespread behavioral change is proving difficult. People continue to congregate in mosques and gather in groups at tea shops and restaurants increasing the risk of infections. The government announced tax breaks for business people who sell foodstuffs. So we ask the businesses to do the people a favor and lower the prices, because things are hard. This month, and also holy month of Ramadan, is to start soon. The coronavirus has affected us a lot. The economy went down, because we don't get anything from... Well, that's all for now on Africa Focus, but keep the conversation going on our social media platforms at Switch TV Kenya on Twitter and Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. Send your SMS to double two triple nine free of charge. A big thank you for watching. My name is Teratich Bernadette. Our sign language interpreter has been Tracy Dorcas. Stay at home and save lives. See you next time. It's bye-bye for now.